Welcome to Section 6 of the Building Interactive Data Visualizations with D3JS course. This section will be all about the interactive part. So far, our visualizations have not been very dynamic, meaning that once we've built them, that's pretty much all the user sees. Now we're going to be leveraging the most useful part about having the SVG visualizations on the web, which is that they can listen for user events, such as clicking or hovering, as easily as any HTML elements. In this section, we'll be working with our scatter plot from the previous section and adding the ability to change data and manipulate the chart in a number of ways using D3's event model. This will then lead us into section 7, in which we'll transform these basic updates to our chart into beautiful animated transitions. The first video in this section will be a very simple introduction to what events are and how they're handled by D3. We'll finish by attaching a click event to a button that will then toggle the visibility of our chart's labels. Let's start by copying our index5.html file from the previous section to index6.html. Once copied, we can uncomment the circle code. Once that's done, save the file and pull it up in the browser to be sure everything still works. Circles and labels are both there. Everything looks good. Now I think we are ready to register our first event. Let's create a button in our HTML page, select it with D3, and register an event that will simply output that it has been clicked to the console, so that we know we did it properly. Now if we refresh the browser, pull up our console, and click on our button, we'll see the message in our console. Perfect! Now let's try to do something a bit more useful. Our original intent was to toggle our label's visibility. Let's start by adding code to hide our labels. Also, let's change the text of our button to say hide labels. The code we'll use to hide our labels will simply change the text element's display style to none. Now viewing this in the browser, we see that when we click the button, the labels will disappear. But if we click a second time, the labels remain hidden. We need some logic to determine the current state of the label's visibility and change whether we show or hide the labels based on this variable. Recall that if we call a style or attribute method on a selection without passing a second argument, the function will act as a getter and return the current set value. So we can select the country's first text style and store this in a variable to use as our logic gate for whether to show or hide our labels. Now refreshing our browser, we see that we can both show and hide our labels by clicking the same button. Yay! There is one minor problem left. From a UI perspective, it would be much more helpful if our button's text also changed to say show labels when they are hidden and hide labels when they are visible. This is a simple enough fix. We'll just always set the text to our button to what it should say. In the D3 documentation, one of the things noted was that the this context within a listener event is always the current element. We can use this to our advantage and simply select this instead of reselecting the button. After reloading the page, we have our beautiful chart with a button to toggle the visibility of our labels, with the button updating based on the current state of visibility. In the next video, we'll look at how we can actually change our data and thus manipulate the elements in the chart itself.